Hello, I'm Dr. Tom Nichols and I'm recording an installation video to show you how to install the Digital Proactive Care Plan software for EMIS Web. In order to interact with the EMIS Web database and install the necessary software, you have to have a login which has the RBAC code B1700 local system configuration as a bare minimum. That is an access privilege which is normally given to practice managers but anyone who is uh, interacting with document templates or the underlying software should also have access to that module. So the first step is to access the configuration module from the EMIS bubble under configuration and to access the concept manager. From here we're going to prepare an installation folder for the concepts which will be installed later. I'm going to select the root destination of the organization and add a folder. In this case I'm going to call it OCCG concepts. The next step is to access the template manager and to prepare a folder for the library items which will be installed in due course. You may notice that library items are partially hidden at this stage. If your left hand navigation bar is too far over you will not see it at all. However you can access it using the chevron. Again I'm going to load the root directory and create a new folder. This time I'm just going to call it OCCG. My next step is to install the document templates. The document templates are here from a second tab, but in this case, because this surgery already has one, I don't need to create a new root folder. I'm going to expand the folder so we can see them. Now that EMIS Web is ready for the installation of the fi files, I'm going to access the zip file. In my case, I've created a folder from my desktop called Installation Files for the DPCP. This is the zip file which I've downloaded and put in it, but to extract the files I'm going to right click on the item and click Extract All. I'm not going to change the name of the destination folder, I'm simply going to click Extract and the files will be unloaded. So here is my original zip file, but now I have a folder which I can use for the installation. Inside the folder is a subfolder of documents and a subfolder of software. You'll also find some further information in the root folder. So this installation guide here is a written out version of this video. You will find a list of the read codes which are used in the project, an introduction to the background to proactive care planning, but also the user guide as a separate copy. Now I'm going to return to my EMIS web folder. I'm in my document templates section with OCCG selected and I'm going to import an entire folder of document templates. Because I unzipped my files from a folder on the desktop, I'm now able to expand and expand. And this is, these are the folders which were created from the zip, so the document templates are stored in here. There should be seven document templates and they should install in a large batch. And here is my document template folder. We'll return to this information later. The next step is to install some of the software. So the software, if I move back to the templates and protocols section, once again I need to create a folder in which to install these things. So I'm going to add a folder called OCCG. I'm now going to install a subfolder within this OCCG folder to keep the software files together. So I've now created a subfolder to import our software. Having selected this folder, I'm now going to import the items one by one. So I've clicked import. I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to navigate to the installation files. Here's the folder which was unzipped. And here's the subfolder with the software. There should be four items. A quick launcher, a message warning, a data entry template and pop-ups. So I'm going to click and import them one at a time. As I start importing them, the EMIS prompts me to understand where the concepts are going to be stored, and I'm going to store them in the folder that we prepared at the very start. I'm now going to import a second one. I'm now going to import the third file. 
As I install the data entry template, the software is asking me where I want to store the library items. This is the folder that we created earlier in the previous step. It's warning me at this stage that the concept already exists. The reason for this is that this concept has already been imported with one of the previous bits of software. It does not matter that we're overwriting it because it's the same data. I'm going to put it back into the OCCG concepts as well. And the final step is to install the fourth bit of software. Once again, I'm being warned that there's a pre-existing library item. I don't mind overwriting it because it's the same software. It's also warning me about the concepts which have already been installed. This is a normal part of the process. You can simply overwrite them. OK, so all of the software is now installed, but because of the importing process, there is some further configuration of this to do. So here is my item for the quick launcher. I'm actually going to change the name of this and remove the installer. So I now need to edit the quick launcher and build some further links. I'm going to click this item and click edit. I'm going to zoom this out using the button on the overview mode to show you what this software looks like. Unfortunately, because of the way that EMIS templates are installed, each of these items will need to be removed and replaced with your new live items that you've imported. I'm going to zoom in so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with this item here. At the moment, this is just a placeholder with information showing you exactly what you'll need to replace in here. So I'm going to need to create a launch document action node and it's going to need to point to the digital proactive care plan document. So clicking on the node, it now has a blue circumference showing that I have th this is my active node. I'm going to press the delete key on the keyboard and delete the item. Now I need to add back in the relevant node. So I'm going to cho choose launch document I'm going to navigate to the folder where the document is stored. And it's this document here. Now I need to repair the link between this node and the, the end terminal node. And now I can move on to my next one. I'm going to zoom back in so that you can see what I'm doing more precisely again. So this node is going to be a create letter node pointing at the UDNA CPR form. This is my selected node you can see from its blue circumference. I'm going to press the delete key on the keyboard and remove it. Here's my create letter node. The reason I have to use create letter here rather than launch document is that I want this to be editable rather than in read only. So now I'm looking for the document and there it is. Now I'm going to zoom out once more. And I'm now going to uh, select this item from the menu and once more replace this. So again, this is a create letter node for the decision matrix. So now I know what it is that I'm going to replace it with. I have to delete this placeholder and use another create letter node. And there's the decision matrix. I can see I haven't successfully rebuilt my node there. So, onto the next node. This again needs to be a create letter node and it needs to be for the summary document with a matrix built in. So this is my active node, delete on the keyboard. So what I'm looking for is the summary document 
plus the matrix. So this is a create letter node, the summary without the matrix. Summary, no, but no matrix. My next placeholder is a launch document node, not a create letter node, and I'm looking for the draft form with a built-in matrix. This is the draft form with the built-in matrix. And this is my final placeholder, so I need a launch document node. It needs to be the draft version, but without a matrix. The draft version with no matrix. Okay, the final item in this uh, particular protocol, although it does is a display text icon, this does not need to be removed because it's simply a message for the users. So I'm going to zoom out and make sure that all of my nodes are in place and all of the items are routing correctly. And now I can save and close. Okay, so that's the fiddliest section here. The final things to do for the installation involve the installation of a quick launcher for the clinicians. That completes the software pre-installation for the Digital Proactive Care Plan. At the moment, although the software is there, it's lying in a dormant state and I'm going to record a separate video which should be used on a go-live date when the clinicians want to start using the software. Thank you for watching.